Well, we've really come full circle. For those of you used to the Payday 2 challenge run content, you'll know Overkill ain't a big deal worth shouting about. But as of Payday 3's closed beta window, we've learned to fear and put a bit of respect back into the name of the Overkill difficulty. It is once again the game's hardest challenge, and with the many gameplay changes that Payday 3 also offers, trust me when I say it's plenty hard enough to get the blood pumping. I've managed to complete No Rest for the Wicked, the beta's only heist on Overkill once before, when I was in the Starbreeze offices, but that was with a developer on my side, a very overpowered AK, and a full set of skills. With the beta capping out at level 22, leaving us with a measly 7 skill points and only a handful of weapons to choose from, this is going to be an entirely different task to complete. Fortunately, I was not alone in this plight, as I recruited a crack squad of heisters with well over three decades of combined payday playing experience. We have Marion the Top Hat, the memetic master and technician of the team, bringing along all the utility skills they could muster, such as the almost essential master trader skill, to get us losers out of custody faster. Next up on the team we have Little Guy G, a man whose connections go right to the top, frequently heisting with the US presidents. He was the enforcer of the team, repeatedly charging headlong into bulldozers, choosing to take on all the crew's hatred and pain whenever called upon. Alongside him, we have Red Archer Live, the console warrior with access to a set of skills the rest of us couldn't call upon, the power of controller auto-aim. He was our mastermind handling the hostages and picking locks when he wasn't accidentally ending negotiations early. And finally, we have me, a veteran of over 15 payday challenge runs with a penchant for pain. I filled the role of the sharpshooter, packing the BR and sometimes landing my shots. Together, we were woefully underprepared for this challenge, but not lacking for optimism. Here's my build heading into the heist. As I've already pointed out, the SAA144 is completely busted and is the top pick for this difficulty right now, especially if you fancy yourself a bit of a marksman. I'm running the Castigo in the secondary slot here. Personally, I think the Signature 40 is a better sidearm for the SA build, but at this point, either weapon does seem to be doing an excellent job. As appears to be the meta, this is an armor-focused build, packing flashbangs and the infrasonic mine, which I'll show you in use later on. As for skills, I'm running tank and extra plates as my only support skills, although armor up would have been a nice addition to avoid me hoovering up so many of the squad's resources. I pivoted off Enforcer to instead use Sharpshooter Aced in this build, alongside Cutting Shot. The idea being that you can retain uptime on edge so long as you keep clicking those heads, and simply always have increased armor penetration for those shields and heavy swats. Unfortunately, standing still with Sharpshooter is annoying and not very involved, but once you get the ball rolling, this can be a deadly combination. I couple this with speed aim to improve the ADS speed as you don't want to be hip firing this thing, and finally I'm testing out shock and awe as I believe that staggering cops is really useful in overkill where just a couple of them can easily take you down. Whilst I'm not the one packing them, we did also decide to bring along master trader and negotiator as the team having a designated hostage handler is a very important part of the game now. All that said, it's finally time to get England's professional payday squad together to embark on our first group challenge runner. Heading into attempt number one, please forgive me, this attempt wasn't successfully recorded by Shadowplay for some reason, meaning I'm just going to quickly run you through some low poly gameplay ripped directly from the live stream with my ugly mug sitting in the top right hand corner. Here we masked up immediately as are the rules for this overkill fallout challenge and started grabbing hostages. A longer negotiation phase sets back every police assault and remember payday 3 on harder difficulties is more of a race against the clock than ever before so this can be absolutely crucial to a successful run. Unfortunately, Troy got a little overzealous with his hostage taking, doing it right in front of the first responders which gets them all riled up. This brought the police assaults forward, meaning we were always against the clock. Even so, we managed to secure access to the loot and started moving the bags via the alleyway. Unfortunately, on the way to the main road to lower the police bollards, our first casualty, Red Archer, hit the deck. Myself and Marion the Top Hat were quick to follow, and in a moment of righteous justice for the cops, none other than the new and improved Cloaker would be the architect of this first run's demise, taking down little G out of sight of everybody else, ensuring there would be no reviving heroics. Ah well, now I at least get a chance to show you some properly scaled, non-720p gameplay. Attempt 2 saw a few successful adaptations from the team. We successfully extended the negotiations for about 2 minutes, trading up to the 7 civilian mark, which I'd say is probably the sweet spot of resource exchange. We also started leveraging all the techniques we'd learned over the past beta week. I set up my infrasonic mines at the two primary fire alarm switches, allowing me to stun any cops looking to sabotage them in an instant. We also marched one of our held hostages into the upstairs lift shaft, which effectively closes off that entire spawn point, making the thermite much easier to defend. 
With Mario and Little Guy holding down the objective side of things, I stood next to the water sprinkler control panel just in case the boys got a little overexcited in their thermite burning. This gave me complete control over the side alleyway and downstairs elevator, a couple of major spawn points, as well as allowing me to control the rear of the bank if necessary. Once I'd stood still ADSing for 1.5 seconds, I could easily keep chaining edge via successful headshots, meaning I effectively had 10% increased damage and armor penetration at all times. However, at this stage, the EBR basically one-shots everything you see anyway, so it really is no stress to hold down this kind of defensible position. After around 7.5 minutes of repeating this process, we were finally into the bank, dropping down and rapidly defusing the now infamous die packs. Here is where we also decided that this was going to be a full loot run, meaning achy fingers for our resident lockpicking expert Red Archer, as he had a fair few safe deposits to work through to find those final two bags. Whilst I started by assisting, it quickly became apparent that the cops were more than happy to funnel their way into the bank vault at alarming speeds, like a World War Z zombie swarm that required more than a little attention to keep on top of. Once that well dried up though, I gave this zapper a taste of his own medicine and started moving bags out towards the side street. Here I was met by fairly impressive resistance, trying desperately to push me back into the bank with another cop swarm using shields for cover. Here you can see just how powerful the cops on this difficulty become, needing to retreat back to relieve my pain via the bathroom meds. With the deposit finally unlocked at this point though, the crew were ready to push as four, with perfect timing between assault waves. I headed off to drop the bollards, spawning the escape van in as quickly as possible, before rapidly dragging bags off to the main road. At this stage, I'd already called in about three overkill weapons, but there was no way in hell I was risking blowing myself up in front of all the boys, so I left it for them. Shortly after we'd forged a path back to the bank, the van finally spawned in, and in a piece of painful RNG, it was the far side escape, miles away from where we'd been storing the loot. To make matters worse, the easiest route to the escape was now blocked off by a rather angry dozer. Taking him on alone with my current health pool felt like suicide, as even at range these guys can be instantly lethal. I was correct in that assumption, but did manage to land a series of almighty headshots on the big guy before going down, allowing our resident dozer specialist, Little Guy G, to finish off the job and Mario to save the day and pick me up off the ground. Sadly, we lost Troy defending the bulk of our loot in the process, but thanks to the insanely powerful Master Trader skill, his stint in custody was shorter than my time down on the floor, coming in at a whopping 10 seconds. Now that is some masterful negotiation. At this stage, I was seemingly one-tapping everything in sight with Edge Active, even allowing myself to show off a little with this nice Castigo 2-piece. We also had plenty of armor reserves still there to keep topped up on the most important resource in Payday 3. However, at the same time, our overconfidence was starting to get the better of us, with me having to run along the main road to revive Red Archer after he was ambushed next to the alleyway of doom. Or it might have had something to do with the three piglet grenade launches at his feet. I swear they do more harm than good most of the time. After that close call though, we made the truly fatal mistake. You should never drop in enough loot to escape the heist unless you're actually prepared to immediately do so. That's because it instantly activates the final charge, an all-out assault that will never break, meaning it was much harder for us to push against and get the bollards down for a second time. Right on cue, another bulldozer decided to spawn in and wipe Troy off the map. Unwilling to let my comrade go though, I decided I must also be sacrificed, rushing the dozers to bait his kick before rocking backwards and damaging his faceplate. I put my trust in the two remaining Brits to save the day and was proven to have put my faith in the right guys by their heroics, reviving both of us cleanly after finishing off the wounded dozer. With one final return journey, I grabbed the last bag, but it seemed like I'd made a terrible error of judgement, peeling off from the team and returning to the bank, whilst two of my teammates were just one down from custody. In an instant, both Lil Guy G and Red Archer were both in police custody, with Mario going down shortly after, outside, alone and completely exposed. As the last man standing, I decided to take extreme action, grabbing a remaining civilian and planning to use him as a body shield against the endless assault that was now charging my way. Unfortunately, the second I got my hands on this executive, a heavy SWAT sprinted up the stairs and took that risky shot, firing straight through my back and ignoring my prisoner, dropping me instantly and bringing this run to an abrupt end. So close to victory. If nothing else though, this proved it could be done. So we headed in for attempt 3 with everything we'd learned. After a brief team talk and uh, a little civilian frisking by Mario piloting the Madman Wolf, we charged in once more. Again, grabbing the all-important hostages and, you know, roughing them up a bit. I'm almost positive Melee in Payday 3 does no damage at the moment and exists purely as a stunning utility, which I'm not sure how I feel about, but it does let you kind of go to town on the sieves without any repercussions. 
With the thermite once again blazing, I took control over my usual door and unhasped a few more cops' helmets from their heads. A sabotage squad managed to make it through our defences this time, setting off the fire alarm and slowing down the process, although I was able to wrestle back control quite quickly. With such a competent team, dare I say it, the interior section of the bank heist is maybe a little boring as it's so easy to control the space and keep most cops outside the building. Hell, I was struggling to keep my edge stacks going as there just wasn't enough swats for me to physically shoot at. However, once inside the vault again, things do naturally start to heat up. Here I headed off to clear the snipers off the map and the big adaptation for our team was using the intel we'd gained from the previous run to move the loot via the main road, not the side alleyway, as whilst more exposed, the spawns on this side aren't quite as hectic and we knew the escape van would be coming in at the same spot as last time as RNG remains fixed between attempts. Whilst this does mean we're stuck with slightly inferior RNG for every time, it also means we can adapt and play around it, which is a major advantage. In Payday 2 fashion, I made a solo sprint all the way to the escape, aiming to lower the bollards immediately this time to speed up the potential escape process. Unfortunately, I forgot to give my gangmates the memo, meaning I was totally alone. If you need any evidence as to how brutal the damage can be on overkill difficulty, you only need to glance at my health bar on the left side of the screen. Within a matter of seconds, I was surrounded, stripped of my armour and taken down, with cops pushing from either side and actually pincering me, which was really tactically impressive. And with a dozer now in my midst, I called the boys off their rescue attempts. Fortunately, within 10 seconds, I was back in action popping heads with the gang, as you're a spawn next to your teammates, not back where you died. Honestly, I think custody at this point is a little bit too limited a penalty, with skills allowing you to circumvent it almost completely and essentially use it as a method of healing up some armour. In any case, I got my revenge on the dozer who'd sealed my fate before grouping up with the squad to push back to the bollards and start the escape proper. Little guy G and I managed to clear the best part of a police assault in under 10 seconds as the resident wielders of the almighty SA battle rifle. This gave us the room to start moving the bags as a team, covering each other's backs this time as we went, moving all the loot before actually considering calling in the escape. This prevented the issues we'd had with the final charge before, massively lowering the risk of going for the full loot clear. Eventually I made the call to drop the bollards off Assault Wave and group back up with the gang as we held off the encroaching wave with our long range weapons. Damage drop off feels a lot better balanced in Payday 3, with some skills even allowing you to circumvent it completely. With Red Archer firing heavy ordnance down Main Street with the War Machine, marrying a top hat holding down the side street and repelling spawns, little guy G and I went toe to toe with another dozer who could single handedly take down the entire squad if given the opportunity. Fortunately, little guy's a beast who's happy to face tank dozers if it keeps the team alive, trusting me to revive him after his final cast go shot brought the dozer to his knees. Seconds after this, as we started to run low on ammo, even with the insanely ammo positive BR, Twitch couldn't have pulled up at a more clutch time, with the crew already in the perfect position to start moving and secure all 10 bags, finally completing No Rest for the Wicked on Overkill, fully loud, in under 15 minutes. What a rush. Team play was everything on that one, and I have to thank the guys for joining me to make this video a possibility. Overkill is no joke in Payday 3, but I do think that it'll be more accessible of a challenge for all players than DSOD is in Payday 2. The difficulty feels much fairer and open to a wider range of playstyles. Bearing in mind we were doing this, admittedly with some very powerful weapons, but also with hardly any skills and not the strongest armour, it is a highly surmountable difficulty at the moment. In fact, after this and similar performances like it, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if we got somewhat of a difficulty tweak going into full release. Personally, I find the lulls in the Assault Wave to be a little too forgiving, Custody nowhere near enough of a penalty, and the fixed RNG to be slightly too easy to plan around. It means there are fewer surprises and curveballs and overkill, which would otherwise keep experienced crews on their toes. Imagine, for example, that the van instead randomly spawned on the opposite side of the road in that successful attempt. That would have seriously thrown our strategy for a loop, and might have resulted in failure, or at least forced us to think on the fly. Either way, I'm incredibly excited to play every heist on Overkill once we get our hands on the full game. Just from my prior experience, the art gallery is a massive step up from the basic bank heist, so I'm going to reserve my full judgement on the difficulty until we have had a chance to play the full release. Speaking of that, if you guys are keen to upgrade your gaming rig in preparation for Payday 3's launch, the guys at Apex Gaming PCs remain partners of the channel, with my range of three heisting themed computers acting as the perfect gateway for your life of crime come September 21st. Thank you so much for watching this video guys, the Payday 3 beta has been a real blast and I have some lasting memories of it that will be with me for a long time to come. Take care, enjoy the final day of the beta and I'll see you all very soon. 
A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.